Uh, do I look frustrated or constipated? <laughs> now I know why no one really wants to work on these bearings or when I talk to shops who know about these bearings, they, they shied away from this job. Now this isn't right. At least I don't believe this is right. So should you get Neverlube? Find out. I broke, I broke the snap ring. I don't know what to do. I broke the snap ring. Oh, I broke both sides of the snap ring. I broke that side and this side. I tied a little wire on there so I wouldn't lose it. I would think that the snap ring would come out easier because there's less of it and I broke over half of it. I've tried hammering it, chiseling it, I tried drilling it, I don't know what to do. Welcome back to Roadsteading, Ben and Lauren here. This week we are working on our Never Lube Dexter axles. We are going to be putting a new cartridge bearing or a sealed maintenance free bearing in. I have never done any maintenance with these bearings since I purchased the trailer back in 2014 that was seven years ago. I've roughly logged 45,000 miles on this unit towing it myself. Now Glendale Titaniums were built in Alberta, Canada or Canada somewhere up there in a territory and I know that this one was first sold in Florida. When I purchased it, I found some receipts inside of it that suggest it's been to Alaska, and I purchased it on the West Coast back in 2014. So I don't really know how many miles are total on these axles, or if there's been a bearing replacement in the past. All I know is I've done 45,000 miles on them in seven years, never done anything and I'm going to be a little proactive and a little reactive because I do think I have one failing but we're going to be replacing all four of the cartridge bearings on our fifth wheel this week. I've done some research on them. No one can say what the life is on these or how long they go. There seems to be all kinds of different applications that these bearings are on and depending on that application the bearings fail sooner they fail later offset of the wheel is a big one I think we have a very small fifth wheel and a zero offset so I think that's why we've had such good luck with these when I've heard other people haven't had any luck or that's why you get mixed reviews on them because of the application the setup that it's on is that bad or is it okay I'm not sure but the other wheels don't do this now the never loop cartridge bearing is different from a tapered bearing and they are not interchangeable in fact the axles and the hubs are machined differently to either accept the cartridge never lube bearing or a tapered bearing and in addition, there are three different sizes of the Neverlube bearing. Ours happens to be a 42 millimeter. Now these bearings are a completely sealed bearing from the factory. We are seeing some grease ooze out of ours and that wheel is a little bit looser than it has been in the past. Airplane. Now on other axle type bearings, you pull them apart once a year and service them and grease them and repack the grease and put the bearings back in and I've done that multiple times on past trailers this is the first time I'm ever doing a cartridge style bearing we're gonna go with this one again I'm just gonna take a proactive approach and we're replacing all four because you do need some equipment and some time to do this this is nothing you do on the side of the road that you may be doing with a traditional axle after breaking how many, Lauren? Three snap ring pliers? I finally made my own tool out of the Phillips head. I just ground it down and 
kind of made a hook and I think I'm going to get the snap ring out this way. Nice and slow. Huh. We had the tools all along to get this done. Just don't want to break it. I don't know where we would find one of these snap rings right now. <laughs> Are you relieved? <laughs> I am relieved. Yes, I am. I'm so glad that ring came off. Now, now that I broke these, I think I gotta get another pair so I can put it back on. <laughs> Let's try out the new press. Now we removed that snap ring from the outer side of the hub. It was located right here. That's because the bearing pushes out this direction. So we're going to push from the back, push this bearing out, and then we're gonna flip the hub over and push the new bearing in. All right, see if this press works. I guess I should tighten this up, huh? Probably. That took quite a bit, huh? Yeah, more than I thought. Should've got the bigger press. I haven't pushed many bearings in my life, but I've been around a lot of equipment and a lot of shops, and when you're pushing a bearing, you wanna push on the outside of a cartridge bearing. These little discs I found at the hardware store are working to push on the outside, because if you push on the inside, I think you'll break it loose you'll break the inside of the bearing loose from the outer part of the bearing. For this size bearing, this little plate on top, we'll put it in the press, slide it right back in. Push it down, and you'll feel it seat. You should feel it seat against that back part of that hub. That didn't sound good. No. But it's in there. Right past the point where the snap ring goes. Seat it all the way in to the back. Let's put it back on. That went a lot easier. Nicely done. All right. I wonder if I should put some anti-seize on here. Now we are not saying that these bearings are bad. In fact, Ben is having a lot of trouble with that spring retainer, but we worked on this for about 10 hours. You can weigh that against 
a tapered bearing which you have to service annually or this one which we now have 10 hours into over seven year period of operating them. We do suspect that even the original bearings on the trailer were not 100% sure so was it worth it for this 10 hours or should we do something annually. For now, we're putting cartridge bearings back in and hopefully we get the same life out of them. So far, Craftsman screwdrivers have been made better snap ring pliers than any snap ring pliers I've used. Let's get that notch a little bigger. trying to dremel out a notch in the retaining pin or the snap ring pin or it's not a pin the snap ring or retaining ring to see if I can get a flat head in there maybe I can manipulate it manip is that how you say it? manipulate manipulate it a little bit better it's already broken I can't break it more but I can scar the machine surface and I don't want to do that. Removing the snap rings was the hardest part of this job. Not only were they difficult to remove, but we did have the one that broke. And on top of the stress of not knowing how to get that out, we also knew that we were not going to be able to get a new hub in a timely manner. So we had to get that snap ring piece out without damaging the hub. It's almost there. I can't believe it. I dremeled the snap ring out. Gotcha. And I didn't cut into the, I didn't cut into here, so we're good. Thank goodness. Ah, uh, yeah. That's stressful. Now just to get that bearing out. Now I have it up on these wood blocks because I'm pushing it through. But initially I started with just these iron blocks. It was on the hub here, resting here. And I've been pushing until the bearing breaks loose. And man, does it make a noise when it lets loose. It's a little scary. I feel like I need a bigger press because I, I feel like I'm pushing this one. Definitely made a mistake in sizing our press. The 12 ton press was definitely not big enough. In fact, we bent the press in the process of removing the cartridge bearings. And we would definitely recommend getting a bigger press. In fact, we almost got a 20 ton and we should have. But once it breaks loose or you get that initial push, then I've been putting it up on these blocks because that's what I have because I need that space to drop the bearing through. It seems like it takes a lot less pressure once it's at this point. But in the beginning, it takes a lot of pressure. Um, in fact, I've been hiding behind this wall right here when it breaks loose because I'm a little scared. Well, my take on these never lube bearings are I think everything has a place in the world and understanding the application for the component that you're using is very important. And these never lube bearings are a maintenance free bearing. In the last seven years, I haven't touched these, I haven't messed with them, I haven't done anything with them until now. And we did have one that I think was going bad and I think we caught it early enough to where we didn't have a catastrophe on our hands, but we weren't comfortable rolling. And the other wheels were fine. But that one was bad and we're being proactive about this and just changing all the bearings out. Now, I haven't, like I said, I haven't touched these bearings at all. And my take on them is it's very involved when you have to work on them or change them out. And they are pricey. So, seven years of no maintenance, haven't touched them, haven't messed with them at all. And then the last two days of messing with these, you know, it seems like a lot of work. And... I think I would prefer to have a serviceable bearing that we have to dismantle once a year or annually, but I can see where these come in really, really good. 
good, is that the word? Really, really well. If you're a weekend warrior and you don't want to keep up on a lot of maintenance, these bearings probably can last you a long time because you're probably only going a few hundred miles from home on the weekends. That keeps you from servicing them. And as long as the bearing fits the application that your trailer is, then I think it's a good application. But then when it does come time to service them, I can see where a shop will charge a lot of money and the bearings are expensive. 45,000 miles I've towed this trailer. So I'm going to go with them again and I hope I have no issues with them. I think these bearings might last us the rest of the time we own this trailer. We're keeping this trailer longer than we had anticipated. One of the reasons why I always push the brakes and the bearings off, because I, I thought we would have a new trailer, but in the past year, that got put on hold, and so now we're doing this Never Lube bearing replacement. Should you get Never Lube? It's up to you. So I'm going to work into the night again. We worked into the night last night. I'm going to work into the night again. Until next time, remember to seek, learn, experience, and grow. And join our caravan by clicking that subscribe button and following us on our webpage, roadsteading.com. The brake pad fell off. I don't know what to do about that. Maybe we can glue it back on?